Hello Anchored Outdoors viewers, I'm Tiffany Bader and in this video I'm going to show you how to make fresh tortelloni stuffed with homemade ricotta and stinging nettles. Hey gang, I'm back and I'm going to show you how to make some fresh tortelloni. And yes, you heard me right, I did not misspeak. Not tortellini, tortelloni. Now the difference is a filling. Tortellini is usually filled with a meat stuffing. Tortelloni on the other hand is made with a soft cheese and herbs or greens. Now for this recipe I'm going to show you it's going to be stuffed with fresh ricotta that I've made and stinging nettles that I foraged. So let's just jump right in with our ingredients for our dough. We're going to be using some all-purpose flour. If you have double O flour it's milled a little bit more finely. It's going to give you a nicer dough but all-purpose is great. It's easy to find so that's why I'm using that here. As well we've got some semolina flour. Again not essential but if you don't have semolina, just bump up the same quantity for your all-purpose flour. Now we have eggs. We're using whole eggs as well as just egg yolks, which is gonna bring up the protein content of our dough. It's gonna give us a much nicer, chewier dough. And we have sea salt, and that's it for ingredients. I love making pasta. It is like a meditative process for me. So when I do it, I make sure that I don't have anything on my schedule for a few hours. I'm not stressing about running off to a project. My kids aren't running around. Maybe I'll pour myself a glass of wine and just have fun with it. So hopefully you're gonna do the same thing. This is not something you rush through. So before we dump the flour on the table to start mixing things, I'm just gonna mix the flours and the salt together so it's all incorporated. So we have our all-purpose flour. We're gonna mix the semolina right in there. Put in some sea salt. And then just give it a bit of a mix. And then we're just gonna dump it out on the table and start kneading. So you wanna have a bit of a well in the middle, place for your eggs to go. So I'll just like this. Nice big spot. Then we just dump our eggs right in and then we'll slowly start to incorporate the flour. The easiest way to do this, to make sure that you're not gonna get too much flour incorporated with the eggs too quickly, is just use your fork and give it a bit of a stir as you go around the outside. Now it's always easier to add more flour than to add more liquid. Adding more liquid it sucks. You kind of have to just spray water on the outside. So you don't necessarily have to use all this flour around the outside. You might not need it all, but if you do need more, you can always add it in. You just want to keep stirring in the flour until it becomes one cohesive mass. It'll be a bit shaggy. At that point, we're going to stop using our fork, use our hands, get in there, and then just start kneading. At this point, the fork's not really helping me much. I want to get in there with my hands and I'm going to start kneading. You can see I will very likely need a bit more flour to go so I can just grab a little bowl and toss some more in as, as I need it if it's sticking a little bit too much to the table. Pull up my sleeves and just get in there with my hands. Start kneading. It will very quickly come together and it will be nice and bouncy and bright yellow from our egg yolks and we want to knead it for about 10 minutes people always use the term you want it to look like a baby's bottom now i don't know if that's really an accurate way to put it but you don't want it to be like this where it's pulling you want it to just be nice and bouncy and stretchy and really you want it to start to get a little bit hard to knead actually you know that the gluten's getting all worked to the point that we want it to. Get out the stresses of the day. Add more flour as needed. Like at this point, I'm gonna need some more flour. I'm gonna clean off my board, scrape it down, get rid of some of the shaggy bits. You don't really wanna incorporate that back in. And then I'll knead this for about another eight more minutes. Okay, I think we're ready to go here. Our dough is nice and supple, bouncy. You can see that the gluten is really really worked well here at this point our dough is ready to go we don't want to roll it we want to let it rest for at least an hour if longer that's even better 
So we wanna wrap it in saran wrap, pop it in the fridge and let it sit till you're ready to roll it out. So when you're out in the bush, going for your walk, looking for nettles, or even just wandering around not looking for nettles, you'll notice these. And once you start to notice them, you will not unnotice a nettle. What you wanna look for is a plant with opposite sets of leaves that will rotate 90 degrees for each set. So one set of leaves will go out and then the other set will be above in the opposite direction. There's hairs on the stems and the undersides of the leaves. The edge of the leaf is serrated. When the plant first starts to shoot out, the leaves will be a little bit purple on the underside. The other thing is, it, it, it hurts, but it doesn't really hurt that badly. You can touch a plant and you get a bit of a sting from it. When you do pick them, you wanna make sure you wash them really, really well because they tend to pick up lots of little critters and sand. So give them a really good wash. Now, when you're picking them, you wanna to try to limit it to the top two sets of leaves because those are gonna be the most tender and delicate and they're not gonna be all woody and stringy like they can get on the lower sets of leaves. I have been stung quite a bit by stinging nettles. Basically, every time I go pick stinging nettles, regardless of the gloves or not, any thickness of glove, I always sting myself. Now, there's a plant called dock, which has nice long green leaves and when you pull the stem the, there's strings that will pull apart. In nature you'll see things like stinging nettle and dock will grow side by side. I, I don't know if I've ever seen stinging nettle grow without seeing dock within 10 feet of it. It's good to be able to identify that plant as well because if you get stung by stinging nettle one of the best ways to pull the sting out is to just you chew dock or crush it up and then rub it wherever you've been stung. Salt your water really generously. Once it's at a rolling boil, throw in your nettles and cook them for about two minutes. To set the deep green color and stop the cooking process, plunge your nettles into an ice bath once they finish cooking. Once the nettles are cool, drain all the water off of them by squeezing the nettles really well and chop them finely. Okay guys, time to make our tortelloni stuffing. We've got our homemade fresh ricotta and to that we're gonna add some blanched chopped nettles. Make sure that you press them very, very well so there's no excess water in there. One whole fresh large egg. Grated Parmesan. Pinch of black pepper, nice good pinch, as well as a few grates of fresh nutmeg. If you can use fresh nutmeg, it's gonna be a lot better. You don't need that much. It's got a bit of a kick to it. And then you just mix it up. Ensure that it's fully incorporated. Everything is mixed together well. You're not gonna over mix at this point. There's no flour or anything that you have to worry about. I'll give it a bit of a taste. See if the flavors are right. Tastes really, really nice. Perfect. We can put this aside and start rolling out our pasta now. I'm just gonna take a minute to talk about this piece of equipment right in front of me. It's a very basic pasta roller. You can pick it up most supermarkets, Italian delis. It's not a hard piece of equipment to find and it's not expensive either. I think I spent about $30 on this. It's gonna make rolling out pasta much easier for you, but if you don't have it, don't sweat it. It's not a big deal. You pretend you're an Italian grandmother, get a wine bottle and roll it out on the table. You don't need to do anything complicated with this. We're just rolling it out flat. So if you have this, pull it out. If you don't, no big deal. Just roll it out with a rolling pin. We wanna make sure that we're putting a liberal amount of flour on there so it doesn't stick to our machine because that's not fun at all. So get nice and covered. Take our cranker. I'm sure there's a more technical term. So you wanna make sure you're at level one there's a, a knob here that goes from one to, depending on your machine, seven, nine, 10, somewhere in there. So we start at the widest setting, which is one. We also, for this pasta, we're not gonna be using our spaghetti or fettuccine, if yours has it. They, most of them, the basic ones come with a thin cut and a wider cut for the other pastas. We just wanna stay with the plain roller. So we take our dough, put it in that area there, and then just start cranking through. Once it's through once, fold it in thirds. Okay. Let's 
stretch it out a little bit so it's gonna fit nicely. A little bit of flour on there, it's a little bit sticky. And we roll it through again, the opposite way of our folds. If it starts cranking a little bit sideways, just give it a bit of a tug, it's pretty forgiving. If we fold it like this in thirds, we turn it and we roll through that way. Roll it through one more time. We're still on the number one setting. We haven't made it any smaller. So we've rolled through our dough three times on the number one setting. We can start moving down through the numbers. So we're rolling it out thinner and thinner each time. So I'm gonna crank it over to number, number two. Dusted it with a little bit more flour and I'm gonna roll it through again. Now from this point on, we don't need to keep folding it in thirds, rotating it. We're just gonna go through one time on each different number as we progress through. So it gets thinner and thinner. Cranks over a little to the side, just adjust it. And it shouldn't be sticking to your machine. If you do find it's a little sticky, just add a bit more flour. If you find your pasta is too long and is becoming difficult to handle, simply cut it into smaller, more manageable pieces. I know I've rolled my pasta to the right thickness when it becomes a bit translucent. When I can see my hand through the pasta, I know I'm there. Pasta sheets are all rolled out, so now we're ready to cut them into individual pieces so we can stuff them. Now I'm gonna be using a circular cutter if you don't have this, it's not a problem at all. By all means, cut it, cut the pasta with a knife. If you have a square cutter, this will work well too. But really, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter at all. Just cut your pasta in any way that suits you. Stuff it with the filling, seal it, and cook it. That's all we want to do. So I'm going to start with my cutter. It's really simple. Just lay out your sheet. I've got a very, very thin dusting of flour on top of the pasta and on my board. And that's it, you just cut, press down. And just try to get as many different pieces as you can as you go. Let's get them nice and close together without pulling or stretching the dough and misshaping it too much. To keep the pasta from drying out as you're working, make sure to put any pieces that you aren't currently working with under a tea towel. So don't stress with this part, this is supposed to be fun. It doesn't need to be perfect. Just get some stuffing in the middle of your pasta, seal it up, set it aside. It doesn't matter if it's not perfect, it's still gonna taste delicious. So I've got a little dish of water here that I'm gonna use to seal it and uh, I'll go through the process so you can see how it's done. So I take my pasta, I hold it in my hand, I get a little scoop of filling. This is a bit of a trial and error thing depending on the size of your pasta. After a few, you'll get the hang of it. So you pop it in the middle, run your fingers, around the outside to get the pasta damp. Fold it in half. And as you're doing this, you wanna make sure that you're not incorporating a ton of air bubbles. If at all possible, make sure you're squeezing it all out. You can see that this isn't perfect. It's pretty close, but it's not perfect. But uh, you wanna fold it in half, get a touch of water on one side, attach them. And that's it, that's all you do. When cooking the tortelloni, remember that fresh pasta only takes a fraction of the time to cook compared to dried pasta. Once the pasta is cooked and strained, I toss it gently with some melted butter, grated Parmesan and fresh herbs. Don't forget to check out my other video right here on Anchored Outdoors, which will show you my simple foolproof method for making perfect ricotta every time.